Hi, and welcome to Maya Star 6.0. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go over very quickly what are the new features in Maya Star 6.0. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the regular Maya Star menu, and some of you who may have bought older uh, versions of Maya Star um, will probably notice that there have been a few changes here and there. And um, so it's a little bit different than you're used to, uh, but lots of new, great new stuff, new features. Okay, so let's start off from the top. Let's start off with Activate Maya Star Avatar. Okay, let me tear this off here. Okay, uh, now what we have at the top, uh, this window has changed a bit. Um, the, the top, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, uh, five sections here um, are all the same that they were before. Uh, there have been improvements to the avatars uh, themselves, um, making uh, like the faces uh, sliders more accurate. Um, but other than that, these work exactly the way they did before. Okay. But what's new in Activate My Maya Star Avatar is the Sansar avatars. We ha now have the Sansar avatars, female and male, and we also have uh, reshape bodies. Uh, these are so that you can. It's to help you reshape your mesh clothing that you've made fit the Linden Lab default avatar bodies to um, to fit the Sansar uh, bodies. And um, although there's not that many people who have actually made clothing for the Linden Lab default avatar bodies, they make uh, clothes more for the uh, fitted mesh bodies, the custom mesh bodies such as Slink and, and Tonic um, or Beleza. I am going to be making a video that will show how you can add uh, those bodies to the reshaping body so that you can reshape your clothes that you've made for, say, Slink and reshape it to, uh, more quickly and easily to reshape it to fit the Sansar bodies. Um, at this point, uh, it's, uh, let's see, it's July 23rd. Uh, Linda Lab has announced that they are going to be coming out with new Sansar avatars either in August or September. Most likely it will probably be, I mean, it could be any of those two, any of those two months or it could be a little bit later. Um, you know, Linden Lab, sometimes things happen and they have to push things off. Uh, so, but when I do, I will come out with an update for people who have bought my Star 6.0. And I will be updating, doing an update to, um, uh, so that these stay current with whatever the Sansar avatars are. Um, so that's what's new in the Activate Maya Star avatar. Let's move on. Uh, the next huge improvement and new feature in Maya Star is uh, this dev kit import. And I will be making a video of all these new features individually that go into each one of them in more depth. Uh, this video is just to go through to show you the quick uh, new things, new features. Uh, okay, so the dev kit import. Um, we have three new ways you can import. Well, actually, one, this bottom one here, is more like the old way of importing a dev kit, but it, it too has improvements so that it's more accurate than it was before and less of a hassle. Um, uh, but there's three ways you can import a dev kit. Um, the, the most preferred way to import a dev kit is if the dev kit provider has provided you an FBX file that is compatible with uh, with Maya and Second Life, um, and that's the that's the most accurate way, and it's the easiest way. It's only two steps. You just click on uh, step one, and then you imp which gets, lets you brings you in the import. And definitely do click on these steps as you're doing it, because uh, there are uh, functions that happen when you click the the steps. Um, so, but like I said, I'll go through that in more detail in a, in a later video. So FBX import, and then you have a Myasterizer uh, function or feature that takes the skeleton and Myasterizes it. It converts it to being compatible with Myastar and having all the sliders and everything work with it. Uh, that's uh, FBX import. Then we have a Maya DAE or Avastar uh, DAE dev kit import. Um, these both are to be used on empty scenes, just like you see here. They're to be used in an empty scene um, uh, to start with. 
you import into an empty scene and then you you know going through these steps and then you'll be left with a, a nice uh, miasterized skeleton that you can um, uh, rig to okay so uh, with a DAE and like I said this only works do not use a blender DAE uh, that is using the built-in blender Colada DAE, DAE exporter it just won't work I've tried every setting I could possibly try to try to get the DAE from blender uh, using the the default DAE it doesn't work or the the, the built-in DAE exporter the Colada exporter you have to use if you get if the dev kit has been only provided you like say a blender file you have to have Avastar and export out an Avastar DAE otherwise it won't work okay but then there's three steps there's the, the import the DAE and again make sure you click on this step one to import it um because uh, the step the step one import props the scene in certain ways uh, to make sure everything is okay um, then step two is the dev kit prepper that's after you import it many times especially when it's an avatar DAE the avatar comes in all messed up uh, looks like a like looks like it's a, a ball of of mesh <laughs> it doesn't look anything like an avatar uh, and that's okay that's what this does this help this fixes the skeleton and the meshes and so if you've seen any sort of weird stuff when you import the DAE uh, you do step two and that will fix it plus it looks for other problems such as multiple bind poses or missing bind pose one and if there is it will give you a warning and it will tell you exactly what to do and then again then after you've fixed it then you do the myasterizer okay and the third way of bringing it in is where you um, uh, you activate one of the four female or one of the four myastar avatars first then you import the FBX or DAE uh, and if there is still a problem you have this down here which is uh, it's it's very it's basically the same thing as the dev kit prepper it will fix uh, uh, skeleton issues and mesh issues most of the time almost all the time that I cannot make a single program or a single script that will fix every possible problem but I made one that fixes the vast majority of the, the issues that you'll run into okay so that's a huge improvement it makes bringing in dev kits so much easier and like I said I will be I will have a video uh, that I've recorded uploaded that shows you how to do each one of these step by step and it really um, is so much faster and all of them are more accurate than the old way uh, that it was before and like I said I'll go over that in that uh, in the other video okay so that's dev kit import very very uh, huge improvement okay remove my star not skeleton has been improved it removes my star uh, everything out of there leaving you just basically the skeleton and the mesh that you've rigged to uh, it's this function is basically uh, for if you've had trouble exporting out your DAEs where Maya either freezes or crashes uh, this is that you click on this right before you export out the DAE uh, just so that it simplifies the scene to the bare minimum skeleton and your rigged mesh and uh, that many times will uh, allow you to export out a DAE with no problem if you never if you don't have a problem when you export out a DAE you don't need to be using remove my star not skeleton okay the next uh, thing new feature is these grid settings these grid settings allow you to change the size of the grid and the snapping of the grid and I will have a video that goes over uh, this new feature and demonstrates it and um, so yeah so this is a new feature and this is really awesome um, it's a lot of times when you're uh, rigging clothes to the meter scale avatar uh, the grid is really tiny and especially trying to snap to the um, to the center pivot you want to use uh, this one which makes the grid bigger and makes it much easier to snap but I mean I go over a video that goes through over all of this and the difference between the snappings here okay let's see uh, the next uh, improvements have been in the Avastar appearance editor uh, we have a new button to reset the skeleton uh, it's different than the mesh default button um, and uh, and I have a video that goes over uh, over the new function and how you use the new button there and there's one for the mail as well a new same button 
Okay. Uh, the next uh, new features that we have or improvements are in the animation and poses. And it has all the animation and poses that we you're used to. Or, or I should say it has all the animations that you're used to. It has new poses. It does have the traditional T-pose, but it has now a T-pose with the legs uh, slightly apart at 10 degrees. It has a traditional A-pose with the arms at 45 degrees and legs at 10 degrees. Um, this is different than the A-pose than it was in there before. The A-pose that was in there before was a horrible A-pose. Uh, the arms, the elbows were bent, the knees were bent. This, the arms are straight, the legs are straight. They're just simply rotated at 45 degrees for the arms and 10 degrees for the legs. Uh, I have noticed um, one of the um, mesh body designers uses a, a modified A-pose where it's 30 degrees and 5 degrees for, you know, for the arms and then for the legs. So this is a slightly different A-pose. Uh, some people might like it better than the arms at 45 degrees and legs at 10 degrees. And then we have a T-pose where the legs are at the arms are straight out in the t traditional T-pose, but the legs are at 5 degrees. And I have a video that goes over uh, these poses, I believe, and um, what their uses are for and all that kind of stuff. Now, these are poses. These are not bind poses. You can make any of these poses the working bind pose by um, coming down, first clicking on any one of these poses, and a new and custom bind pose, create bind pose. Okay, and then, of course, you have, you've always had the, the, the ability um, to create your own custom bind poses and um, so that you can click on one of these two um, and so you can have your own custom bind pose uh, always ready for you to use if you happen to use a different bind pose. Say your A pose, the arms are at 20 degrees and the legs are at 2 degrees. You can create your own custom bind pose. But that's been in Maya, for Maya Star for a long time. Okay. So that's what new. Oh, and all these animation and poses, uh, they all work when you um, maesterize, use the maesterizer. They're in there when you do that. So, okay, so that's the new, that, that's what's new in animation and poses. Okay. So after animation and poses, another huge improvement is we now, I have uh, a partnered with uh, Optimo Maximo, who's the creator of uh, MyAnimate, and he has graciously uh, created a MyAnimate Lite. MyAnimate is uh, uh, an animation uh, plugin for Maya uh, that allows you to uh, make animations and export them out as .anim files. And so uh, he wonderfully made uh, a Lite version it doesn't have all the features at, of my animate has. Um, that's why it's light, my animate light. Uh, but it has basically all the functions that you're going to most likely need as, say, a clothing designer. So you'll be able to make poses and small animations for a single avatar. Or not small animations, you can make long animations, but uh, an animation for a single avatar. If you want to make animations for couples, you're going to want to to buy the full version of Animate. If, um, if you want to have control where you control the priority uh, of the individual bones, you're going to want to buy the full version of My Animate. Um, the, this is the anim My Animate light export window. Uh, it has where you can set the priority for the overall for the animation, not the individual bones. Okay. Um, and, um, and again, it doesn't do couples animations. It just does animations for a single avatar. But there's a lot of great stuff in my animate, uh, such as you can generate skeletons, animation rigs, really easy for either uh, .anim or BBH. So this is so much better. This, the, the, the animation um, uh, rig, you know, um, the animation rig to control the avatar to bend the, to move all the joints and elbow, and the joints and bones um, in the avatar itself. This is so much better than, um, than, than this. This uses uh, full body IK 
these here. Use full body IK, which is very buggy. It's not my fault that it's buggy. It's that Autodesk created full body IK first. They kind of developed it, stopped developing it, and abandoned it for human IK or HIK, it's often called, that's human IK. Uh, they abandoned it. They abandoned full body IK for human IK um, long ago, and this uses human IK. And this is so much better, and you can, it, it just takes a couple of clicks, and you got your animation rig all set up and ready to go. So this is a huge improvement in being able to make animations. Um, and then uh, my animate light also has a scene export this is an awesome awesome feature um, uh, scene export allows you to um, create a scene and you create a scene in the um, uh, let's see I'll show you what I'll, I'll show you a quick okay let me activate say uh, bed to female Okay, so we have the bento female, and if you go to meter scale, now when you go to meter scale, it just makes the avatar the same size it is in Second Life, but that, um, it makes the avatar the same size it is in Second Life, but the, the working units are still centimeters, and that's very important. The scene exporter only works correctly if you are in centimeters, um, which is the default working unit of Maya. So if you were to go in here into preferences, Oops, and let me pull that over. And um, let's see, I think it's in settings here. Yeah, if you go to working units, centimeters. Um, this, that's the default. So if you've never changed this, this is the default uh, working units. And just making the avatar meter scale, it makes the avatar meter scale but it doesn't change the working units of Maya which is what exactly what you want so um, uh, so say you, you can create a whole sim in Maya out of mesh with individual meshes being individual objects um, and um, you can even animate the avatar to be you know uh, the correct size you know like say you were doing a a bar, right? So we're doing a bartender uh, animation. And you created this really lovely mesh bar. <laughs> not a, not this box, but you know, a really nice mesh bar that you, that you've meshed up. And, um, and then you've put individual objects on the mesh bar, such as you know, bottles of wine or ashtrays or bowls of peanuts, you know, whatever it is. Um, and you animated it and then you, you, um, uh, don't want to export, you know, you don't want to have it be a single object in Second Life. You want them all individual objects. And like I said, this can be sim, sim wide. You can create a whole sim. Um, and you use this export, um, new feature um, and and you would want to make sure that everything after you've created it once it's scaled up to the be the the right scale to fit the avatar here in in meter scale you uh, freeze transformation on everything um, so that the scales are one one and one um, and um, and it, it it's okay if you've if you've like say duplicated this say these could be chairs right and you've duplicated it and you've rotated it. You can rotate it to however you want, okay? And um, you could even um, have it say, we're gonna snap, let's say snap to point and, whoops, and, whoop, w, okay, snap to point and, Let's say we snap that to there and we snap that to there, right? It is so precise 
Now you can have that like that. These be two separate objects, you know, and do the scene export. And um, uh, like I said, I'm going to make a video showing exactly how to do this and then export, you know, you do need, you do need to remember the name of the, the objects, you know, um, and then you select them, you export them out as a DAE, um, or you, you, or you select them, you do the scene export, you browse to where you want to save it, um, um, we'll say desktop, and you just click save because that's not the name, and then you give it a, you give it a name, you know, um, uh, demo, uh, what's new, and you export it out, and it did create an LSL script, and you use that LSL script in Second Life so that when you res, you 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 and it, you create a res box, and you put after you've uploaded these, you and you put in a script into these individual objects in Second Life. You put them in a box. You put you get the the LSL uh, file that we just created. Uh, that you uh, you saw me, I just created it, uh, and you put it in the res box. You click the res box, and it will place these objects perfectly. So, uh, um, it's it's just. And it places it relative to the center of the sim, I believe. I'm not sure. I, I haven't quite mastered it quite yet. But anyway, but it will it will place these objects um, exactly like that to where these match up perfectly. It's just awesome. It's like incredibly accurate. Um, so yeah, you can create a whole a whole sim in Maya out of mesh, fully textured, everything. Um, and then export out that LSL and uh, upload your mesh and and put it in the in the res box, you know, put, um, and like I said, it's just, you know, uh, upload your mesh, res your mesh. Um, if you can, you could, you could um, uh, either upload them as individual objects um, or you can upload them as groups of objects like I have here where I have groups of objects and they're, they're individual objects. But I could export these out as one DAE, upload it, uh, export, uh, res the object, unlink it, res the object in Second Life, unlink it after uploading the DAE, then drop in uh, the the script. Uh, there is a there is a second LSL script that goes inside uh, the individual objects, and you'll get that. That's in your uh, Maya folder, Maya Star folder. I mean. You drop them in the objects, take the objects back into your inventory, you res a box, you create a box, uh, or whatever's going to be your reser. Um, you drop in uh, the ob you drop in now the objects into its inventory. You drop in the LSL script that we just created that you saw us create just a little bit, and you click it, and it will place res and place the objects exactly where they were. So it's very exciting. Um, so you'll be able to create a whole sim uh, in uh, in Maya and have, you know, so it can be a very complicated sim, uh, uh, sim with a bunch of different uh, meshes, but once you've done that, um, you can have it placed on the sim perfectly. Um, and I mean, absolutely perfect, uh, where it's just lined up absolutely perfect. So it's awesome. So that's a, a new, very exciting feature. Um, uh, it also means that you'll be able to make animations and have the animations uh, uh, perfectly aligned with all the objects, all perfectly aligned. So it's it's awesome. So my uh, my animate light, uh, especially with the scene exporter, is a huge uh, improvement, a, a huge new feature. So um, yeah, so I'm very excited. So we've got a lot of new features with the Sansar avatars for people who are wanting to get into Sansar. Um, we got the dev kit import to make bringing in dev kits so much easier. Uh, we have the, the grid. Uh, uh, you know, this is a thing where, like I said, we make the grid bigger. Now you could snap to the grid um, uh, <clears throat> while you're placing your objects um, much better. Um, uh, 
we have the improvements in the appearance editor sliders, uh, all the, you know, uh, uh, and a new button. Uh, we have the new poses and we have uh, the My Animate Light. So yeah, so we have a lot of new improvements, a lot of new features uh, in Maya Star 6.0. Uh, I think it's, I think it's a huge improvement to Maya Star. And um, so uh, <clears throat> I do need to mention, I want to make clear, this is not an update. This is a new version of Maya Star. Uh, this is this is not an update. This is a new version of Maya Star. So updates are always free, but new versions are not necessarily free. Um, I know historically in the past, my versions were were free to people who had bought Maya Star in the past. But I, I have to stop that um, because um, there's just so much work has gone into making this new version. And um, um, and Optimo uh, deserves to get paid for his uh, his Maya my animate light. Uh, he deserves to get paid for that. And he was huge. I mean, he, we worked. To, he he helped me so much, and, and we worked very closely together to get all the the improvements in the dev kit importer. Um, I I'd say he worked just as hard as I did have on all these new functions. Um, uh, I mean, he did all these, this, this is all him. I, I helped integrate it, uh, to get it into Maya star, um, a, a bit. Um, I'd say we pretty much equally did 50, 50 on all this in here. Um, and this was all his right here. I mean, so, um, so yeah, this is a new version, not an upgrade. Uh, new versions, like I said. Uh, now, what it's going to be is if you've purchased Maya Star in the past, uh, you'll be able to get the new version of Maya Star for 50% off what the new version of Maya Star is going for. Um, uh, so, uh, so Maya Star 6.0, you'll be able to get it for 50% off. So there is a way to upgrade. It's an up. You can upgrade to Maya Star 6.0. Uh, zero if you have an older version of, of Maya Star. If you've either purchased it yourself um, or if somebody's bought it to you as a gift, uh, you'll be able to get it 50% off uh, the, the, the price um, of what the current price is of, of Maya Star 6.0. Um, let's see, those who have so those of you who have bought it in the last six months, Maya Star, you'll be able to get it for the difference between uh, what you paid for Maya Star and the current price. Um, and so, uh, which is the, the which is a little bit less than uh, fifty percent. Um, so you'll get like set. I, I don't. I forget what the percentage, but it will be more than fifty percent off if you purchased Maya Star in the last three months. Uh, so you'll just have to pay for the difference in the price, basically. Um, but those who have bought Maya Star in the past, longer than three months ago, you can upgrade to Maya Star 6.0 for 50% off of what the current price is for Maya Star 6.0. And so, and then if you're watching this video in the future, and Maya Star 6. Point, uh, say 6.1 has come out because the Sansar has been updated. Uh, if there's been an, there might be an increase in, in price between 6.0 and 6.1. No, that would be an update. Um, uh, so no, no, f the price might increase, but those who have bought 6.0 will get the update for free. Um, will get the update for free, but the price might be, depending on how much work it is, uh, the Sansar avatars, there might be an, a, an increase in the price between 6.0 and 6.1. So it's whatever the current price is, 50% um, uh, off for those who have, had bought Maya Star 5.2 and older, 50% off. Um, and um, so anyway, so uh, so yeah, so so that's what's new. Hopefully you're really excited. You're not. You don't have to upgrade to Maya Star 6.0 if you're happy with Maya Star, uh, whatever version of Maya Star, older version you have. They still will work. You don't have to upgrade if you don't want to. If you're perfectly happy with the way things are set up. Um, but hopefully I 
see show you that there's a lot of nice new stuff in Maya Star 6.0 that hopefully a lot of you will want to upgrade uh, to Maya Star 6.0 for 50% off the what what Maya Star 6.0 is for sale at. So awesome. Um, you'll be getting a, a gift card, I believe. If I, I'm still trying to work out exactly how to do this, I think it, I'm going to go the the gift card route that you'll have received, or you can get a, a, a gift card sent to you um, by clicking, by going to, um, by resing the update checker and, and clicking yes to get the update. The update will, um, or an update, you can always, even if you have the latest version of Maya Star, you can res the update checker and get a fresh copy of Maya Star uh, 5.2 or 5.21 I think is the current version although I messed up and should have labeled everything 5.21 <laughs> but it's it's 5.2 that you download from my website is 5.21 um, it is the current version so so even if you have the 5.21 and you've bought Maya Star uh, say in the last six months a year or so when I came out with the 5.21 um, version even if you have that version, just res the update checker. You can get a fresh copy of 5.21 um, through the update checker, and that should have the um, uh, the gift card in it. And then you can use that gift card to go to my sim, um, where I will have uh, a vendor, um, a Casper vend, where you can go and use that gift card to get 50% off uh, the current price of my start. So awesome. So I think that's how I'm going to do the route. Um, and that way people who have gotten it as gifts, my star from, uh, from gifts from other people will be able to, to get it um, really easy with not no hassle. So, um, so awesome. So uh, that's it. That's what's new. And we'll look forward to, um, uh, to seeing you guys in the next videos. Thanks. Bye-bye.